Hello everyone, this is Jig, and this is a super sped up recording of the adventure map encounter that I built uh, for the 2020 competition. Now, obviously I can't win because it's my own entry and I am obviously biased, uh, but one of the biggest complaints, oh and if you don't know what that is, there should be a link in the description right now and on the screen. and have a look and check it out and then enter and stuff but anyway one of the biggest complaints was that the 20 by 20 by 20 area is just too small to have any sort of really good encounter and I strongly disagree and especially after I built this uh, I disagreed even more because I spent this build is the span of one hour and I built quite a quite a lot managed to cram quite a bit in here so uh, my basic idea was to make a bridge assemble itself. Now whenever I'm building an encounter for an adventure, uh, I always try to start with like a really basic outline of what I want to build. Uh, so you saw there I went through a few variations of the bridge that I want as the assembled version. And then I do all the redstone stuff, so I'm working on uh, lining it up, counting how far you can see here I'm counting how many blocks it needs to go so I'm putting up some gravel and and stuff like that and basically how this will work is whenever I trigger something it will push the bridge out into place now what is a nether scenario without lava uh, this is pretty much just for looks the lava and to keep a player from advancing without going across the bridge uh, and I like to use glowstone under lava too, I'm not actually sure why. I guess it's just what I do. This diamond block, uh, I always want something to stand out that you're going to put your lever or button on. So a diamond block is, you know, one of the most standouting blocks that there is. Uh, and it contrasts really well with the netherrack. And then I'm going to start with the redstone. Basically, the idea is to find a button, press the redstone, uh, press the, the diamond block with the button on it, and for then the bridge to assemble. Kind of like the robot that I did. Um, so we've got a clock here, and we want that to go on for uh, five or six, I think it ended up being times uh, and there's an RS null latch so once you press it once it goes on and then it stays on and it doesn't um, doesn't continue and there's a really short monostable circuit there as well so the pistons can expand and retract and leave maximum amount of time for the gravel to fall now I'm digging out uh, the mob encounter where you have to find the button and I'm making quite a big room actually it's kinda of hard to see with it sped up this much but you'll see I do a little bit of a playthrough after this once I clear it out now I'm building this whole thing in creative mode I do do a little bit of stuff with MC edit at the end uh, and I did MC edit obviously the block in to begin with um, so I've already dug out my room and right now I'm trying to figure out a way for maximum amount of mob spawning. So I built the lava goes down and that lights up the main tunnel and I'm blocking it off so you have to go around this uh, this netherrack area before you get into the room. And now I'm placing the goals. Looks like there used to be a button here. Just some helpful hints for the player without obviously stating put a button here uh, is a lot less exciting than there used to be one and here's the entrance we're gonna put one of the uh, pumpkin people here and he's gonna introduce the quest to you he's gonna have a few items that he'll give you you know a weapon so you can live and some apples I do like uh, <laughs> When you when you're placing signs near lava, you have to be careful because oh, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm getting potions. That's right. Um, you have to be careful because when there's something wooden like a sign that doesn't actually burn, sometimes a block near it will burn and set fire. So in that case, fire actually started on the diamond block. So I had to move 
the sign a little bit. That way the player wouldn't think that they uh, would have to put out the fire. So now I'm placing uh, equipment and, and stuff around the course. Some hidden stuff and the end goal. I think I moved that around though. I don't think it stays there. Actually, I don't, no, it doesn't stay there. Yeah, here we go. So I build it up a bit more because I wanted to put more in the area. There's a lot of stuff to think about, but at the same time, here's our same guy. We don't want you to be able to see that person from anywhere inside the encounter until you get to the end. And you see there, I'm going to be adding blazers, and that's why I included the potions, so they're a lot more bearable. One other thing I did here is made some holes in the roof, so there's still light coming in, but I didn't want it just to be a square, square roof. And I really like, since 1.0, they put the, the lava that drips through. So I'm putting some lava up the top there just for the sole purpose and, and in the cave, just for dripping through the cave there. Because it actually lights it up a little bit too. Uh, now I'm in MC Edit, changing it up a bit, uh, changing all the glass to invisible blocks and adding my mob spawners for the skeletons and stuff like that. That's pretty much it. I think I spend about half an hour once, so from start to finish, uh, start to this point, took just under an hour, and that then I sp spend about 30 minutes uh, polishing it up. Okay, and this is the finished encounter. Hey buddy, you might need this in the dungeon here, it's super dangerous, good luck. He gives me some items, thanks bro. And uh, we go have a look here. See, I, I added some of the nether brick here to make it look more fortressy. Now, the idea here is that I wanted you to be completely overwhelmed when you go in here the first time. Because um, without the right equipment, there should be too many monsters. <laughs> this, this creeper scared the crap out of me. I'm like, damn it. I didn't put that creeper there. My biggest fear is it blowing up and destroying some of the redstone. So the zombies aren't too bad, but I figure when the player starts to see the blazers shooting at you, real you realize you do not have the equipment to deal with that right now. So you got the other path that is there. One thing actually looking at this now, one thing I might do is go back and add more swords and uh, apples just in case you do happen to die uh, and lose your equipment that wouldn't be too bad so so here you see you can't advance there's a lava fall and you're not really sure you see where a bridge used to be and it looks like there used to be a button here so now I have the goal um, you see where the bridge used to be <laughs> fail jump uh, and you look around and see if you can see anything else this is my amazing acting. Oh, what's that? That's a, oh, there's a chest over there too. See my amazing acting at work here. So going over to get the other chest, you run into this one and you have some potions. Uh, some splash potions that were put in there for the zombies. I don't think I actually use them here. Um, but I do have them there. Some players like that and there's just a variety for that. And the instant harming potions for the for the blazers and here we have the remains of someone there's some bones in there some armor now like I said I, I spent about half an hour balancing it and what I found was every time I went in there even armed with these potions and that that sort of stuff I still died um, that's why I add the armor in there so it's not a full set so you're not completely overpowered and there still is quite a bit of a risk But now, armed with the correct equipment, we should have a much better chance at uh, taking on this room. Obviously, standard adventure ru uh, rules reign, so you can't just break through the wall or run around it. 
But now with this fire resistant potion, the blazes are no problem. I'm obviously going to feel a lot more comfortable now and the blazes are taking care of the zombies as well even. One thing I didn't realize, uh, and I do when I do this playthrough actually, I put tons of torches down just because I don't want the stuff to spawn. But the blazes actually never stop spawning, even when I put light all over the place. Here we go. Yay! So that looked like I only killed one, but it certainly weakened a lot of them. I just killed two or three with one hit there. Now that we have enough dead, we're going to check the chest. I'm still trying to make it so they don't spawn. And the blazes actually have a, a close range hit too, I didn't know about. Anyway, there's a button. I'll probably add a couple more buttons in there, again, in case you die and you have to come back and get another button. If you die and lose the button in lava, then the encounter is wasted. Yay, we were victorious. Now with the button, we can go back up to the diamond area. Huh, huh. And when we place this down, we have our redstone set piece. Uh. And I actually set the clock to stop after six. There's a little counter in there and once it counts to six it releases water on the clock which disables it. So there's no more lag. Oh you made it up here. When you were fighting the blaze I came up here. And here's an item for you. Yay! So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. As you can see, I fit quite a bit of stuff in the 20 by 20 area. And actually, I was a little worried at the beginning. I was getting a lot of, you know, just lava parkour missions. But in the last couple of days, I've been getting a lot and a lot more uh, adventure, adventure style entries. And they're looking really good. So make sure you get on that. The last day to enter is uh, Sunday. I'm going to be checking them all on Monday. Uh, so make sure you get your entry in as soon as possible and I look forward to checking them out and judging them. Thanks for watching. Bye.